Battle, power, power level. I am most likely going to confuse these terms and I will go for one of these or I might say something else. Hi, my name is Morseed America. This video is to try to cover a lot of things about this battle power, power level and how to influence it and why you would want to make note of it. Now, I do have some opinions about this battle power, power level and I will share them at the end of this video. Depending on what you want to see, you can look in the description for the time skip. Now, let me explain why you would want to pay attention to this and why this is important. You will want to pay attention to this because there's certain content in New Genesis that requires you to be at a certain threshold. Most likely, the one you are seeing most of the time that you would want to do but you can't because you, didn't ha you don't have the right requirements is the Emergency Quest Urgent Quest. Uh, the raid sort of quest that pops up every hour or so. Those things are important. Because one, to give you a lot of experience, a good chunk of experience, and two, it's pretty much a way to get a good chunk of drops. Hopefully, you could get some rare drops. Moving on, the next example of why you will want to pay attention to your battle power and your power level is due to story. Here's the thing about story as of this moment in recording story allows you to unlock a lot of functions in the game. If you don't do the story, you won't be able to unlock the map, you won't be able to unlock a lot of the features, basic features like doing enhancements and all that. You won't be able to change your class here and there. You won't be able to select your subclass as well. So you have to do story and when you go through story, there will be moments where it will ask you or say that you have to be at a certain level. You have to be at a certain battle power, power level to progress forward. Now, once again, I have some opinions about this. It's not going to influence you in terms of your gameplay and being strong and all that. Yes, it does give you a way to kind of see what your power level, your battle power is at. But at the same time, this does not mean you're like 100% godlike. There's a lot of things you had to consider. And once again, that's at the end of this video. Anyways, let's talk about the various things in game that will influence your battle power, power level. There is one more reason to why you would want to have a high battle power in. Yes, I cut abruptly into this portion because it's this thing over here. If you go to certain areas, there's only two of them right now in this game that has a rank 2 area. Mount Magnus and then the laboratory area. If you use the scroll and you go to this option, it is a rank 2. Rank 2 requires your power level to be at level 84. It doesn't state anything with levels but that battle power needs to be met or the power level. And the same can be said with this. It is a level 84 as well. You won't see this until you complete most of these story quests for the prologue. And uh, what is it? There are level 15 areas that aren't in a rank 2 area. For example the forest area over here. This will give you level 15 enemies. There's a couple other areas that might give you level 15 here and there. The ones that are next to certain bosses on the 32 map areas, they would have level 15 uh, guard spawns. But yeah, you would want to try to hit the battle power so you can get these level 15 enemies. And the reason being is because if you're not in the right to level range, let's say for example you are level 15 but you're killing level 10 mobs, you're not getting the most experience out of it. You would want to fight enemies within that level range of yours. And I already made a separate video talking about levels in the experience game up in right hand corner or in the description. To figure out your battle power, your power level, all you need to do is open up the menu. When you do this, you will see a simple status card. At the very top, you will see a text saying power level or if you're on global, battle power. What you want to do is go towards the right and you will see a giant number there. This is your power level battle power. Right now for this character with the equipment that they have and the classes that they have it is at 1243. There's a number of things that will influence your power level battle power. It will be your equipment, your levels on your main class, the skill points that you have distributed, and then the augments and affixes. Now Here's the thing about the weapons and the augments and the fixes. This is still work in development and I still need to experiment with a good chunk of things when it comes to those particular points. But this is something to note and I will give you at least some consciousness, some awareness when it comes to these things that influence your battle power, power level. So, this is going to be a bit confusing because I am going to be talking about the levels and then skill points hand in hand. 
But let me focus on the levels first because this is important to note. When it comes to levels, it is a thing. You can see that my force is at level 17 and my tech is at level 11. With these two combos, I'm able to get 1243 in terms of your power level. Now, if I decide to swap out of my subclass to something of a level 1, you will see that I still have the same power level. Why is that? Well, because NGS does not really do the same thing like it did in base PSO2. If you're familiar with base PSO2, your subclass will give you a good chunk of stats and it will give you the perks and abilities from the skill tree and then there's some other things as well. This is a bit different because when you change your subclass here and there, it will not that's my main class. If I select subclass and if I change to stuff that has a bit of influence or a bit of levels, you can see that it didn't really do as much other than the hunter. And I'll point out why it gave a good chunk of power level when I swapped to hunter. But as you can see, when I had a ticker at level 11 and a gunner at level 1, it doesn't matter about the levels and you're not getting a bit of other stats as well when you swap to and fro to something that has higher levels. So... When it comes to new genesis, especially in your subclass level, it's not that important unless once again they change it or they update something when it comes to your subclass. Your main class, however, is important to note. So I have a level 17 force. If I decide to go to a ranger, you can see that a bit of my battle power was increased, but not only that, some of my stats were increased. Then if I go to hunter, you can see that it decreased. So your main class level will be important. On the screen right now, you will see that when it comes to leveling up, it will give you battle power as you level up from whatever level to this level, and most likely the numbers are going to stay constant in terms of the level, unless it's a different story. So I'm going to leave the footage in the background playing as it is, showing all these different level ups that I'm doing from this level to this level, this level to this level. But... Your main class is going to have a lot of influence, especially in their levels, compared to that of your subclass. So if you want to level up a class easily, you can topic, but pretty much that's most of the things when it comes to your main class level. Your subclass level is not going to play a huge influence to it, but your main class level is the key thing to get that battle power power level up to whatever number you're trying to go for, or to at least increase it from whatever it was originally. So we could go back to my original battle power, power level that I had for this character, 1243. You might be wondering, okay Morph, if the subclass level doesn't matter, why would I still want to equip a subclass or why is it important? It's because of the skill points. Now, once again, in this video demonstration, I purposely made sure that I didn't put any points in the Tekker and the Gunner. So you can see that there was a change when I was doing it with my subclass. However, one of my classes that I toyed around with was Hunter. Now, I didn't put a lot of points in Hunter skill tree, but I put a couple of points in there, and you can see that it was able to increase the power level a bit to plus 39. Actually, I, I think I lied about that. I think I put a good chunk of points into my Hunter because I was going for a certain style with it. But yes, your skill points will add to your battle power, your power level. So if I go over here and I check out my hunter, you can see that I still got 7 points. I put a good chunk of points here and there. I don't feel like maxing a good chunk of these because I don't plan to use this character as a hunter main. It's more like I'm doing it because I want to tour around with the class, understand the weapons that I'm using and all that jazz. But yes, this does influence your battle power power level. Note that with the Gunner and Tekker, I purposely left them as they are. I did not put any stats whatsoever on Gunner and Tekker. So it gave a neutral score. It gave no sort of perks. But once again, if I were to swap between my different subclass like Hunter and then Ranger or Gunner or Tekker. Well, Ranger is the one that is fleshed out because... I am, this character is a ranger main. But even with all the points used up in ranger, you can see that it didn't really influence a bunch of the other stats as well. But it did influence the battle power, power level, good and or bad. So that is important. You would want to put skills in your 
You want to use your skill points in your skill tree and slowly increase it to whatever number you want to get that battle power power level. How many points are you going to get if you decide to uh, max out a certain... Or if you decide to add a skill point, let's test that out right now. So if I go to my... let's go to Gunner. Because I know for Gunner I'm going to get two things whenever I play it. So right now, once again, our power level is at 1243. When I acquire a skill, just putting one point in here. If I say yes, it was at 1243. You have a little increase. Now it is 1246, so it was 3. Alright, let's see what happens if we add a bit more to the gunner. Will it give us... Wait, what's the number again? I'm trying to make sure I do my math right. 1243, so if you add one more point in here. It's 1249. So every skill point you are using, it's adding a plus three. You have a main and sub. And if you're able to do all the cocoons and towns that are available, then you will be able to get 20 skill points. 20 skill points that can be used for your main class, 20 points that can be used for your subclass. 20 times 3 is 60, times that by 2 is 120. You can get an increase of your current battle power if you use your skill points from your main and sub. And that, that's just a plus. This is a way to increase it. So if I go over here again, what was my power level after going on that spiel? 1249, so it should be 1252 by the time I put another skill in here. 1252, yeah. So as you continue to do the cocoons and towers, you would want to spend your skill points so you can increase your battle power through these means. As you start the game, note that the power level is going to be roughly around like a high number, close to maybe 600. Right now, this character is at 597. They don't have anything on them. Uh, they're level 1 in Tekker, there's no subclass, there's no skill points being used. They don't have anything in the weapons or in the unit. So this is by default their natural power level battle power. Now I'm gonna swap pack to Zill and show you guys what will happen if you add certain equipments with certain variables like augments and affixes and all that jazz. The reason why I have that previous recording and decided to show that is so I can stress on this point which is talking about how you will naturally get stuff if you do this, this, and this. We get to go into some further dissection, in-depth analysis with augments and affixes and equipment and enhancement level and see if that has an influence to battle power power level. But for now, we do not have any equipment on the on uh, Zill right now. So I took up the units and I do not have... Well, right now, a certain weapon is... No, it's not equipped. So, we don't have a weapon equipped to Zell. There are a bunch of weapons here, and I'll show you what happens when you decide to swap to certain ones. And I will say, say this, if you enhance your stuff, they will definitely have an influence to your power level battle power, especially in terms of the weapons. Right now, without anything equipped to our person, we have 878 power level. It's not gonna be it's not gonna go up to 1243 because I did level this character's force. Um note to that when you see the next portion, they are at level 17, meaning that I did record this on separate days. But with this well, without any equipment, they're at 878. And note that when it comes to this, I did not put any skill points in my techer, so I'm nerfing myself in a sense because I didn't put anything in here. If I did, that means I'll be able to accumulate a bit more battle power power level. Most of my points are in the forest tree and this is how I was able to get it. Not only that, your main class level counts with uh, whatever level it's at with the stats that it has and that should be it when it comes to what influenced your power level. So, we are gonna swap between different weapons. I'm going to show you what happens if I equip a 4 star that's not enhanced. This weapon over here. You can see that 
it's not at any enhancement level whatsoever. It's at a five slot. It has some decent abilities, but in terms of my power level, it is only at 1076. Now, this is without any units as well. If I swap to a two star, that's at an enhancement level of 35. Guess what the battle power is? It's higher than that of the four star. Now, once again, the, the thing is the four star is an enhance. If I enhance that four star, it will be a different story. This Nox weapon only has, a, it's a seven slot. I don't know what abilities they are exactly, but the thing is it is at plus 35 and it's only at a two star, but it was able to easily overpower that of uh, no enhanced level four star. When it comes to the next one, I'm going to demonstrate it's a three star weapon that is enhanced. It doesn't have a lot of augments of fixes. It's a four slot, but once again, it's a higher rarity with a higher or with a plus 35 enhancement. Then if we go to the Renza that is enhanced, it does not have the best of augments and of fixes. It's at an eight slot though. It is at plus 35. You can see that the power level is at 1147. And note that this is just with weapons. Weapons only. So you will naturally get higher battle power power level if you get the right rarities or the higher rarities with the right enhancement level. Pretty much, once again, without any weapon or unit equip, we are at 878. But if I decide to just equip something that's not enhanced, that does boost up the power level, battle power significantly. So do not underestimate this. And if you decide to enhance it, guess what? That's how you slowly increase the power level. By how much, I don't know, because I'm not going to be demonstrating or doing any sort of of enhancing in this video and i'm using once again pso2 gear i will mention ngs gear but that will be in the opinion portion if weapons can do something like that how about units so what we going to do is go back to the natural state without anything whipped onto our person we are back at 878 let us go to the unit tab so if i decide to equip let's go for two stars for this example if I equip this that is enhanced at plus 10 with some abilities, you can see that it's at, it's going to give a plus 22. Now, I don't know how they come up with that number. Could be because they add maybe the certain augments and the fixes and the enhancement to that. So, 33363. That's 12, that's 18. So, I don't know how they got to 22. So... That still needs a bit of testing and experimentation. But if I decide to equip this, it will give me 22 to my battle power, so I'm at 900. If I decide to equip another set or another piece, it's going to give another 22. Note that these two unit pieces have the same augments and affixes. The reason why I bring this up is because this piece that I have is not the same augments and fix. And if you pay attention to the power level, it's only at plus 20. So that's something to consider. But anyways, our focus is more on the pieces and how much it adds to the power level, the battle power. So from 878, we were able to get 942. Do not underestimate the unit pieces because you can stack and use those to your advantage. If I decide to swap to a weapon, let's say the two-star weapon, you can see that it easily passed the thousand threshold. So without it, I had nothing or I didn't hit the thousand mark. But with a two-star, just a two-star that's at plus 35, it was able to get past the thousand and even go to 1,100. But you do need to enhance some stuff. So it could be NGS PSO2 gear, depends on which one you want to go for. So, what happens if I decide to mix and match? Let's say that I don't have a bunch of uh, two, three star unit pieces yet. I only have like one of them. So I could go for this piece over here and you can see that it didn't change the number. Originally it was like 9, what, 42 with three of those two star units, but you can see that changing it didn't really push it 
that much unlike that of maybe a weapon but even then it's like there's not a giant change but once again don't underestimate the stacking power so if i want to i could go for the three star units and you can see that it went from 940 ish to what is it 989 which is at least 40 to 50 increase now, if we had to compare it to the original number without any sort of equipment, and it only uses our level, our skill points, it's a giant jump from 878 to 989. Then guess what? If you equip a weapon on top of that, it will be able to push it to the 1200. But once again, you need to consider the augments of well, the augments and the fixes is a different story, but you want to definitely focus on the rarity and the enhancement. Now, you can use the new Genesis stuff, but once again, that's going to be in my opinion portion of this video. Alright, before we go to the next point, we are back at our control number 1243. When I go to point 3 and 4, it is to talk about equipment and augments and the fixes. I have a lot to say, make sure to watch my opinion portion because it will talk about these two points again. Now, for this demonstration, you also have to note that there's a number of variables and factors to consider. The big thing is, I am using PSO2 gear more than the new Genesis. The reason why I'm not using new Genesis is because I don't want to use up a lot of my resources. Because I would want to do it when the time comes. I would want to spend an X amount of resources on the better things and the stuff that is specifically in new genesis i want to wait for the higher rarities and all that jazz so in this video demonstration i am using pso2 gear to make certain points about it yes i already am aware of how some of the new genesis gear is going to be high up there but the trade-off is you're going to have to use a lot of the new genesis materials to do it and depending on your situation if you played on base pso2 if you didn't play on base pso2 that's going to play a factor into what you have to do. So, you have to figure out your bad plans. You have to know the pros and cons to all these various things. But, let's get back on topic. Let's talk about power level. So, let me clear this out. Let me remove these things. Because it's going to get very confusing if I use all these different Renzas in one go. And I will be making timestamps for this. Because, this is going to be our control group right here. This is the Renza that allows us to get the power level of 1243 so i am going to be using a lot of renzas in this video demonstration stuff that is close to the same thing in terms of enhancement some that is at an eight slot some that's not at an eight slot some that's enhanced some that is not enhanced so let's stick with the or let's go with the first easy example this example is to stress on just the enhancement level and having most of the same things until you look at the slot number so once again my power level right now is at 1243 if i equip another weapon specifically another plus 35 but it does not have an eight slot let's see what happens when we go to and fro from this so once again we are at 1243 still have the same units still have the same class and the skill points and all that jazz when i swap to this weapon you can see that my power level changed. It is not at 1243 anymore. It's at 1235. When I open this up, you can see a bit of the difference. So if I have my mouse over here to our usual Rinza, you can see that it took away plus eight in terms of its power level. Now, in terms of the weapon upgrades, you can see that there's a difference going to this compared to this. I lost 4% in my weapon upgrade stat. I also lost, well, I didn't lose anything in terms of the HP PP. I actually gained some HP PP because if you look at this, when I go over to our base Rinza, you can see that I lose negative three HP, negative two PP. Um, but I do gain a bit of power level and I do gain plus four weapon upgrades. So depending on what your stats are, it could have an influence to your power level. And depending on how many slots you have, that can influence it, at, influence it as well. That is just something to note and you can base some conclusions and guesses from staring at this sort of difference. But that is pretty much it for example number one. What we're going to do now is go back to our usual power. We are at 1243. What I'm going to do now is swap this out 
for a weapon that's only at plus 30 and at a 5 slot. So, once again, usual power and, uh, power level, 1243. When we go over here, it is now at 1221. So if I go over here, this is pretty much a 5 slot. And it's not at plus 35, it's at plus 30. So, when I do this, you can see that we lost 22 power level. When it comes to the attack power, it's plus 5. Uh, in terms of HP PP, we gain HP PP plus 3 HP plus 2 PP. In terms of the weapon upgrades, we lost 4% of the SRNT. So, you don't need to maximize it, but you can if you want to get a bit more stuff out of it. So, if you want to, you could most likely push it to an 8 slot so you can get more stats or a bit more power level and you definitely want to get this to a max level so you can increase it a bit further. But this is it for example number 2. Let us go back to our control. 1243, let us go to example number 3 with this Renza. So we use, what is it? We use this one at plus 30, this one at plus 30. Now let us use this one at plus 1. So, once again we're at 1243 and when we go over here, you can see that it's at 1182 now. So if I check the difference, you can see that once again, attack power is, it has a relationship to that enhancement level. So if I were to plus 35 this Rinza weapon over at base PS2 and carry it over here, it will be able to increase that attack power. It could also increase that of the power level. Now in terms of its stats, there's a difference with this one and that one. So, we have this one equipped right now, and you can see that despite losing a good chunk of its power level and its attack power, the weapon upgrades is a 2% more than that of this, and it's because of the augments and abilities. Other than that, yeah, that is pretty much it for example number 3. So if we, were, if we worked on this, it might be able to push the power level a bit more, it, or it might be the same. But I'm not gonna do it with this Renza. I already used a good chunk of resources here and there over in PSO2. But that is example number three. Example number four is pretty much a Renza that, that's just a Renza. So, when we go over here, you can see that this is at 11. 73. So if we go back to the previous example quickly, and let me use this thing over here. This has a bit more influence compared to this that is only at, well, 0 and it's at a 5 slot. Not only that, in terms of the stats that were lost, it lost a good chunk of the attack percents. It lo lost, well, yeah, it lost 35 of the attack power, and then the power level is... It lost 70 of it. So, it gained plus 3 HP, plus 2 PP. And the last example that I have for the weapons is pretty much the still wand. Now, well actually no, there's another example which is this. Let me swap to this. This is my light stream. So, once again, control 1243, go to the light stream, you can see that it's 1243. Despite the differences in the augments and abilities, because I know I didn't fix this as well, this is able to... The light stream is able to give a lot more stats. This one, this light stream is, what was it, my first light stream, and I purposely gave it a lot of things, especially in the attack side. So this is what I have. Not only that, some of these abilities, I think, are able to give me cooldown reduction. I don't think it states that over here. So the light stream, in a sense, is able to give me a lot more stats. It still has the same power level, but it gives a good chunk of, it, of stats. Now, if I swap to a still, which is going to be the last example for the weapon stuff, if I swap over to this weapon series, you can see that this is able to increase my power a bit further. It is at 1247. 
Now I'm confused to why it is able to push it that hard. And this kind of falls onto maybe some of the augments and affixes I have. Because they're both at potential level 3. They're both at plus 35. The only difference are in the augments and abilities. And apparently something is able to influence it better than this. Which I don't know what it is. If I have a light weave, it might be able to push it even further. But I do not have a light weave rod. Um, also, actually thinking about it too, this is a wand. So it is a bit, it's built different compared to that of the uh, rods too. So there is a slight increase. Alright, so we're back and we're back at 1243. Now, to demonstrate the units... We're going to be swapping to this one with this one. I Wait, that's the right one? Yeah, that's the right one. So I think this unit piece is still work in progress. I don't remember what it was. But when I go to this one, you can see that it decreased a good chunk of my stats. Where are you? A good chunk of my stats. It took away 6%, took away a bit of the HP and PP. So... That is something to note and it will most likely have a play in the power level. So if I go back to that, it gives back my 1243. And the last, last, last example that I'm going to do is with this piece here with the leg. Uh, I think I have two leg pieces. Yeah, so this is my cage one, I think. This is old. So it takes a bit of the power level and a bit of my other stats. If I go to this one, you can see that it does do something else, though. This is a certain unit piece that is supposed to go with my tank defense HP build. So if I go to this piece, you can see that it takes away a good chunk of the HP, PP, the weapon upgrades, but it gives me a good chunk of the defense stat. Not only that, if you look at the unit piece in itself as well, it does hint at how much the damage resist is as well. So, that is something to note. But yeah. It does have a bit of an influence to the power level, combat power though, if I go to and fro from it. Could be big, I don't know. It's 16. Might not be as bad if you have other things that can influence it. But yeah, that is it when it comes to the technical showcase and example of weapons and units, augments, and ability. So before I try to wrap up this video, there's one thing I do want to experiment, which is the food. The reason why I'm on a different character is so they can get the daily experience. So right now the combat level is at 845. If I talk to you and select a certain material so I can make a certain food, it's not going to be anything too grand. I'm just going to use one of these over here see if that does have an influence to my combat power nope it does not so all right good to know this is where i'm gonna go into my opinion note that this is my opinion and it might be blunt and aggressive hostile maybe i don't know but here's the thing do whatever you want if you want to be obsessed with this battle power power level that's entirely up to you in my personal opinion it is just a number it is something that you will have to be conscious of and aware of because guess what? There's certain content that is locked behind this stupid number. Does that mean anything in terms of skills and experience and you playing the class and knowing what you're doing? Not really. You could technically use some low-end stuff and beat the living shit out of something that, you know, is at a high level. Um, or at least within your level range. I can be fighting against certain emergency quest bosses or certain bosses with just two-star gear if I want to as long as I meet said battle power requirements or at least in that level range. When it comes to cocoons and towers I don't think there is a giant restriction in terms of you just getting in there without having to meet the said battle power. Yes you might want to be in the same level range but there's a recording that I did with Scar and you might see a bit of it right now. Uh, we powered through one of the damn towers without meeting the level requirements. It is not impossible, it's just that it will take a while, and we did complete it. I don't know if I want to do that again, but if I'm doing it with a friend, I'll suck it up and I'll enjoy it. So, that's the thing. When it comes to content in this game, it's not 
anything new. It, it's not new. The reason why you would want to go for new Genesis gear is because of a number of reasons. The big one that I can see is if you haven't played on PSO2 and you are playing a new Genesis, then you would want to actually work on that stuff. Or if you want to, you can go back to base PSO2 and quickly buy some stuff or have a friend help you out or something. That depends on these factors and variables and I'm not going to be vouching for one side over the other because I don't know the damn situation you're in. I don't know if you played on base PSO2. I don't know if you're utterly new to the game. If you if it's a mix of both, if you're a returning player. There's so many things that you have to address and even though I say something for the general public view, all that jazz in this video, it's not the same for everyone. Like the reason why I haven't really toyed around the, with the new Genesis stuff is because I don't want to waste the resources because I know there's going to be better stuff down the line. Do I really want to waste a bunch of my Maceta working on stuff when I already have stuff that I can work with? I like saving my resources. I advocate that. If you've seen my videos about augments and affixes, I advocate saving and farming and doing a bunch of stuff. Same rule applies to New Genesis. It's nothing new. If you have PSO2 gear, you want to use PSO2 gear for now, then use PSO2 gear. If you have New Genesis gear, you want to use New Genesis gear, go ahead and do it. If you want to do both because you want to do both, then do both. The thing is, battle power power level is just a number. It locks you out of certain content, but that does not determine skills at all. I will demonstrate this by going into certain content by having low equipment or not wearing anything at all. Like there's a recording that I did where I fought against Bujin in the cocoon with just a 2 star. Not enhanced, no units whatsoever. And the 2 star that I used I think was from NGS. I was able to beat the shit out of him. Can I do that uh, out on the open field and stuff? Yeah, but there's certain content once again that locks you out of it. So, it, it is what it is. It's like you just gotta adapt and do you need to be obsessed with the battle power power level? In all honesty, no. I, I wouldn't be obsessed with it because when it comes to the battle power power level, once again, it's just a number that you need to hit because of X, Y, and Z. Does it really determine your skills and stuff? No. And in terms of augments and affixes, especially with what I showed, I wouldn't be too obsessed with trying to make sure the augments and affix hit the battle power increase. What I would want to do is make sure I have the right stuff to do the job. I want to make sure I have the right stats and certain stats that can benefit me more in fucking combat than a goddamn number. Battle power, power level, it does show the overall consensus of all the things that you have that will influence that number. But at the same time, that does not mean anything when it comes to the actual fight. This is the same thing that happens in PSO2 when someone has the best gear, but they are not good in a in combat whatsoever and they die a lot. I've seen that case in Japan and in Global. So guess what? This same thing, the same concept, it's still being carried over to New Genesis. It is nothing new. It's just that, once again, new. it just has a new look, same feel. So pretty much that's my opinion about it. It is very situational because it depends on what you are doing and I would say do whatever you need to do. If you want some help and you want to seek some advice, I'll give you whatever I can, but I'm not going to force you guys to go one side or the other. Obviously, I will say this, New Genesis gear will definitely overpower that of PSO2 gear in due time. I am not going to be wasting my resources though on 4 stars when I already have some 4 stars I can do a decent job. Or better yet, I know some of the augments and affixes that carry from PSO2 is good in New Genesis. And there's no equivalent to some of these abilities that got carried from PSO2 to New Genesis just yet. So, I'm going to play the waiting game. This is why I haven't done any videos about augments and affixes. The big key reason, I don't want to waste resources. Some people are experimenting and using resources and they're giving some information. Shout out to those individuals. I know that RC... Um, by RC I'm referring to Azrai... I can't even pronounce their actual name. Look in the description for their channel. I know that they decide to go out of the way to enhance some stuff. And pretty much they're saying like a 2 star new genesis weapon can definitely do a lot of work. And seeing it with these weapon equips, especially this. And this isn't a new genesis one. This is base PSO2. If it's able to slowly increase your battle power and get past like the 1000 threshold and give you like plus 200. Then yeah, it's going to be beneficial to do it if you need to do it in these certain conditions like if you're new to new genesis and only played in new genesis 
then doing that sort of investment wouldn't hurt you. It's gonna help you, and it will help you get your bow battle power power level. Anyways, I am go going a bit too far in with this opinion, and this video is gonna be very fucking long. But that's just my piece on it. You can state whatever, but uh, that is pretty much it with my opinion portion. That concludes this video. Note that once again, this is with PSO2 gear and showing all these things, but it's something to note and realize, oh, hey, look, this is what influenced this and this is something I might want to consider. Obviously, when I use new Genesis gear and if I find something new, I will make an update, a video for it in due time. Once again, reason why I'm not doing it is because one, I'm still learning. Two, I do not want to use my own resources. Three, I'm still doing my own things here and there. And then four, it's just because it's too early. The big thing you have to be careful of, it's too early. If you decide to use a lot of stuff when you don't really need to, when the time comes to use said equipment, you might really need to dump a lot on the newer things. And that's ultimately up to you to decide that sort of path. If you want to do it because you want to do it, then do it. If you don't want to do it, then don't do it. Once again, my opinion about it, Battle power power level is just a number. It doesn't mean anything when it comes to actual combat. Yes, you would want the best equipment to do the job. At the same time, you could technically use decent equipment. Once again, I showed a replay of me fighting against Bujin with just a two star. And then there's another replay where Scar and I just went into a certain quest. Low leveled as fuck with not the best of equipment. Going through a cocoon, a tower. So it is not impossible. It's just that... You gotta trade off some things here and there. So, that is it. Let me know your, your opinions, comments, concerns down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.